All right, guys, I wanted to just show you. I pulled all the valves out, kept them uh, in order. Hopefully you guys are all doing the same. What I wanted to do was just point out, generally what I like to do is either start on the raising the roof on the exhaust side, or more commonly, I will start with my bowl cut percentages and get them knocked out because sometimes they can be kind of slow and tedious. But I want to make sure everyone's aware, when you work these bowl cuts, you're going to have to have full control, speed, and only working half of the uh, seat area at a time. Don't try to work 360 de degrees because I guarantee that's going to make you hit the ceiling surface at the two, uh, 10 and 2 positions. And hopefully you guys understand what that means. Okay guys, first I want to talk about my tool. But I use this double cut tree. This has a measurement of 600 and I think it was 615 thousandths. The important part is using this shape. Now if you were to get a shape, you know, a cutting, a double cut burr with this kind of a shape, with even less of a point, that wouldn't be a negative. That would be fine. Because basically what you're going to do you're going to use this part of this you know from here to about here is going to be the cutting area you're going to use to work the very base of your seat okay i'm hoping you guys can see this because i'm trying to uh, zoom in as best i can but you have your ceiling surface see this super shiny area that is where your valve has to seat now, whether we're talking about intake or exhaust, I need you to locate that ceiling surface and stay away from it at all costs. Don't touch it, don't sand it, don't grind on it, don't mess with it. That is where your tool control is gonna come in 151%. Because what you're gonna have to do is right at the base, right at the base of this seat, is where we're going to start working our bowl cut. Because what we're going to do is, if you can imagine, from the ceiling surface of your valve to the bottom of the seat, we're going to cut that distance in half. What that's going to do is give us a visual representation of how to use our tool to work from, now if you have the head in this position, work from the 3 o'clock to the 9 o'clock. Don't go any higher. I guarantee you from experience that you can only safely work about the three o'clock to nine o'clock position and be able to keep good tool control and vision. And you're going to have to be able to visualize and watch exactly where that tool is taking off material. And you're going to work this half of the head. Then you're going to flip it over. Then you'll work the other half of that bowl uh, bowl cut. So what you're going to do is slowly and as methodically as you can, you're going to take your time and you're going to open this bowl up to your new performance percentage cut. Now, the trick is you have to make that a smooth transition all the way from the aluminum up to where it's the valve seats. Okay, so once you go above that half point, a while ago when we were talking about we're going to cut this area between the bottom of the ceiling angle to the aluminum. We're going to cut that in half, work the bottom, work the bottom half. Once you start trying to smooth that transition between the bottom cut and that ceiling surface, you have to go super slow. Do not mess around. If you get frustrated, you know, get, get anxious, walk away because you will jack up your ceiling surface in your in your seat. So what you're going to do is you're going to open this up all the way around, half the seat at a time, and flip the head. And keep doing it. Be very consistent. Now you'll find the sides of it are always going to end up your pinch point. Why is that? Because like I said a while ago, once you go up so far on this uh, half moon shape, you can't really see it, but you have to stay away from that ceiling angle 
So just inevitably or inherently, you will cut less here and here because you're trying to avoid that ceiling surface. Now you can put this cylinder head on end. You know, I've done it many times, but I will caution you, be very careful because when this is on end and you're working it, it's easy to knock it over. So if you put it up on end, that's fine because you can work these sides that are, you know, gonna need a little more trimming to get your, your template to go through. <clears throat> but work it at the bottom half with your tree. And then what you'll see is the natural shape of this tree especially on these LS cylinder heads, cathedral ports. Just look at, look at this one I'm working so far. <clears throat> I have my bowl cut done, and you can see where that tree has started blending my new bowl cut on the seat itself into the aluminum. Okay, now you can see that little uh, dark area. Let me, get my, let me get my pointer. This little area right here, that's a factory undercut or like a casting flash or not flash, casting line. That's just a casting line that will be removed during the finishing process. And then if you'll look down here, it's a bot base of this area. Get my hand out of the way. Right here, there's a big indentation from a, what's called a machining mark or an undercut from when they were doing the raw machining of the head and their tool went down and touched it right there. That'll all be smoothed out. But now keep in mind, that's purely cosmetic. You know, this little divot that they put in there from the factory is not gonna you know, hurt your flow of your port. It just doesn't look very good. So if you get to smoothing this out, because remember, we're gonna leave as much material as we can on this back wall and make that transition as smooth as we can to our new bowl cut so we can gain flow and maintain velocity. You know, if you're smoothing this out and you think, eh, I don't, I don't feel comfortable going any more than that, well, just leave it. That little divot behind the guide isn't gonna hurt anything because we're gonna go in there in one of our future steps and we're gonna greatly reduce the uh, profile of this valve guide boss and remove this swirl ramp so we're gonna have a new blending situation here on the swirl ramp side. But I just wanted to show you real quick, using this tree, uh, like I said, this one's measuring like 615 thousandths on the fattest part, but that is the cutting area that you're gonna use to work that valve seat half of it at a time, flip the head and just keep going back and forth until you get your template to fit through there with no resistance. Here's my template. See, no problem. I have the, let's see, these are gonna end up really close to 91%. Like I'm doing as much work as I can in the safest maximum they're going to end up about 91 percent on the intake and 87 percent on the exhaust but i just wanted to show you i got all my bowl cuts done intake and exhaust and i wanted to show you in this part of the porting video i'm gonna flip it over and show you the, the burrs i use and discuss how i use them on the exhaust side okay like magic we flip the head over and I've already pre-staged the uh, scribing of the exhaust ports to raise the roof. So let's get a little closer look so I can tell you, tell you what I'm doing and why. Okay, <clears throat> I wanted to point out, you don't always have to have all three of these burrs, okay? First and foremost, all this is a potential time saver. And if you're first starting out and you're doing your first set of cylinder heads, you may not want to use this aggressive burr because this can move, remove a lot of material very quickly. But as I stated earlier, this can get you into trouble really fast and remove too much. 
So be very cautious. Like if you're gonna go ahead and use this and try it, use a very light touch, low RPM, you have to have severe tool control because this thing will jump. If it grabs and pulls, you have no way of stopping it. It's way too uh, strong. But you can use this to do some rough, you know, what I call rough cut or bulk material removal where you're nowhere near the uh, final port shape or wall or anything like that. Then it, what I have, now keep in mind, all three of these burrs are half inch. Half inch, single cut, non-ferrous. This is a single cut, half inch flame. Okay, this is a very nice burr. Comes in handy in many different uh, situations when porting these heads. It is a finer, like a fine single cut, half inch flame. And then you've got your half inch egg. This is good for smoothing and blending as you move into the port. So I just wanted to point them out before I show you the port. Work. Okay guys, so now when we, when we prepare to do the exhaust port two manifold modification, <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we're gonna raise this roof. First thing we have to do is properly locate a I use a factory GM MLS gasket. I get it as centered and as perfect as I can. You can color the part of the head, which is just the top three quarters portion, because we not we don't we don't work on the floor of a port. We work on the roof. Now keep in mind this is be the roof. This would be the floor of the port. And when you put your gasket on there, read it. Do yourself a favor because it's gonna tell you on there which way is down and which side faces the manifold. I colored this thing just with a, a Sharpie marker just to show you guys that you don't have to buy the more expensive Dicom because they have blue, uh, red, black, all kinds of colors of Dicom. But if you have a good, you know, well new well-functioning marker, all you have to do is just color that aluminum, get your lo uh, locate your gasket, and make sure it's tight where it cannot move, take you a sharp, what I just use is a scribe, and then you'll see all these shiny areas around these ports, that's where I'm gonna remove material. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is we're literally gonna raise the roof this much. Okay, we don't want to go any higher than that, and, I'll, and this is why. When you bolt your exhaust manifold, your header, whatever, onto this head, you never want any part of this exhaust port to run into a wall. You want this hole to go in whatever you bolt to this head. Now, <clears throat> when you pull your exhaust manifolds off, you're going to see where... Uh, I guess it's carbon builds up on this on this cylinder head and it'll show you exactly where everything matched up previously so what you want to do is just slightly widen this port and raise it but leave the line okay a lot of people want to get aggressive and just keep digging all the way out to the gasket I've found that it matches better, especially to factory exhaust manifolds, if you leave the line. And you're, you know, you're already <laughs> raising the roof a significant amount in the most important part of the port. Keep in mind, guys, when the exhaust gases are leaving the cylinder, they are what's considered superheated gas that's going to just naturally want to follow the highest part of the port, which is your roof, and get out of there, okay? They're gonna be moving at a, just a super fast rate. It's gonna to try to follow the roof, and it's gonna get split by your valve guide boss, which will be greatly reduced in profile, and follow the roof to get out, okay? So you're gonna gain a significant bump in exhaust flow by your valve guide work and raising the roof, which basically gives that less of a turn 
and a more efficient path to get out of this head so that it can flow more CFM. So keep in mind, this is what we're gonna do to the exhaust port so that we can raise the roof and get it to dump into a stock exhaust manifold header, anything of that nature should work perfectly. So remember, when you start looking at other people's work, if they start making this hole really super big, they are actually causing a detriment to the cylinder head flow because if you have a hole here that's bigger than your exhaust manifold or header, you've ruined the head. Unless you're gonna make a custom header that has a you know two inch you know tube and it will match that new hole, which can be done, don't get me wrong, but I'd say 90% or more of the people that are gonna run these heads, they're not buying custom made headers with two inch primaries and all that. So they're gonna have a huge problem with flow because it's gonna get turbulent as a big dog when that air tries to fly out of that oversized hole and runs into brick, uh, uh, the wall of the exhaust manifold or header. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody.